Okay. Anytime you're okay. ready. Okay. All right. Steve has the, the video on, so I want you to say, and don't worry about him. Don't look at him. Just look at me. We're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, I want you to start by saying your name loud and clear and the fact that you were born in Palmyra and if you tell us your age or you tell us the date, you know, not the date in particular, but the year that you were born. And then we'll go on from there. Okay. okay. Well, my name is June Hershey. Uh, I was born in June the 20th, 1920, so I'm 90 years old. And uh, I lived on North Railroad Street uh, practically all my life. Okay. Uh, I graduated from the high school when it was just the one school. No, my senior year I spent in what is now the uh, middle school. Okay. That was then the height that was just built, and I spent my senior year there. And then on I, Cherry Street, there in the. Yes, on, on West Cherry Street. Right. Great. Yeah. Well, now, when you started school, did you um, go to a one room schoolhouse? or? No, no, I went to the school that was torn down there where, well, really. in, where Interfaith is. And that was first, we didn't have kindergarten. That was first through 12th grade in that building. And I went there 11 years. And uh, just spent one year in the other school. Was that a big transition? Because I, I went to that Railroad Street building until fourth grade. Oh. And then we moved to Forge Street. And I remember there was a big deal made. We all walked down from Railroad Street building. Did they have like a transition day or something like I that? Don't, I don't recall that they did. And I think we just finished 11th grade in the old building. And we started yes. the new year in the new building. Okay. And we spent uh, one year there uh, in that building. Okay. And uh, we did have business. Uh, in the old building, and then they had a business, uh, business uh, department department in the new building. Uh -huh. I bet it was the same business department that when I went to school, probably it was over in that building. So yeah, it was Mr. Same. Smith, I think, was he teaching when you were there too? That's right. Oh he was the one that was teaching when I in my senior year, and we had. Uh, they said we had too many study periods and we had taken all the courses that were available. So I asked if they would give a typing a class, school class talk for us and they did. They gave, uh, we had a typing class, but it was the last period of Friday afternoon, so. <laughs> That's a tiring time to have. <laughs> so we didn't. But I really wanted to learn to type, so I did. I did learn to type. I don't know if anybody else did. And then did you use that when you, yes, when you so went I to work? Yes, I went on to college. Oh, you went on to college. I went right. on to college. So and where did you go to college? Albright in Reading. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what did you take in college? Home ec. Oh, no. I'm a home economist as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't have home economics anymore. I know. It's changed. I don't know what they call it. They right? call it family and consumer sciences. Uh -huh. Well, that's probably very appropriate well, for today's world. Uh -huh. So uh, then you taught how many, when you came out of well, Albright? No, I did one year and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> I, I did too. I didn't, I didn't really like it. And uh, well, then I married uh, and then divorced. Uh, and I finally retired from uh, Defense Fuels down in Alexandria, Virginia. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, what did Defense Fuels do? That's uh, uh, they bought the fuel. They bought all the fuel. The Defense bought the fuel for the government. For the and the services bought it from Defense Fuel at a standard oh. price. Oh. They. Uh, would lump all the contracts and all the all the uh, cost of operating the terminals that the government has worldwide. Wow. I never realized it was as far. It's not called defense fuels anymore. It's defense energy, but it was defense fuels when I worked there. And about what years was that? 
You were away from Hellmeyer then. For I, I, I retired in 1986, and I worked, <clears throat> I think I had about 24 years of service. Okay, so from the 60s. From the, yes. You were away from, the, in, away from Hellmeyer from the 60s to, uh, or was it earlier? Yes, then? no, I guess it would have been, it was in the 60s. And uh, I worked in New Jersey at McGuire Air Base for eight years and then transferred to Alexandria where the headquarters was. Okay. So you knew about Palmyra in the early days and yeah. then you came back to Palmyra after eight years? Af after I retired, no, then I moved to Danville for, I believe I lived there eight years, uh -huh. but it wasn't home. Then I returned to Paul Byer for 12 years, I guess I lived in that apartment. <laughs> yeah. So that I, I can relate when you say it wasn't home. You know, where, where you yeah. grow up is your home, uh, even yeah. though you may travel. Uh, I, I met people, but for, through the church <clears throat> that I attended, but it just wasn't, wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. So I moved back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, we're glad you're back in the Palmyra area. Tell me, off the record, before we were, you were telling me something about the politics of Palmyra. Let's yeah, talk about it, that. It, when I was growing up, uh, there were very few Democrats in Palmyra, and if uh, there were a few, but but not very many. And after I know it was after presidential elections, the party that won. They would have a new, after the election results were announced, they would have an impromptu, uh, like a torchlight parade through the town, just a group of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all together, no bands or anything like that, just a group of people to uh, kind of serenade their winning. And after uh, uh, Roosevelt won in 1932, there was an Al Yeiser who was a Democrat and had a barber shop on Railroad Street and he organized a group, it was a small group of Democrats who marched through the town to announce their victory. Oh, that's interesting. But, and when Hoover ran in, uh, in 1928, there was, Al Smith was his running, mm -hmm. was the man who ran against him and he was a Catholic. And people who, I know a lot of our neighbors who had never voted before, registered and voted because they didn't want a Pope in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> and when John Kennedy ran in 1960, that wasn't even an issue. Oh, I think it was to a certain extent, because I remember, I was around in 1960, uh, and I remember that being an issue. Yeah. That, you know, if this happens, this would be the first Catholic uh, yeah. president, yeah. and there were some reservations. Oh, I imagine there were some, but I don't think as many as... as oh, Al I'm sure Smith. not as many. I'm sure. Al Smith, because he was elected. Right, right, exactly. He was elected. Well, did you, were you active in the politics? No. Okay. Just, well, my father was very interested in, uh, uh, in, in events, you uh -huh. know, that impacted on him. Uh -huh. And uh, he was interested in politics, and I guess through him I, uh, I gained kind of an interest, too. Uh -huh. it, and, uh, so, uh, in that respect, right. the, the things that you know, like financial things that would, like we have now, all this spending and taxing uh, was, was of interest to him. It, so he, you know, it, it, it impacted on his life. So I became interested too. That's good. Very good, very wise to do that. Really, yeah. I don't think enough people take an interest in what is impacting their lives. No, today. no, but uh, I still, I'm still interested in that. Excellent, excellent. And I, I don't, I don't forget to vote. <laughs> that's a, a message we should. More people should hear. Yeah, you know, that, that's that, that right. You do need to that's exercise right. that that option you have yeah. to. Now you raised your children in Palmyra. I only had the one daughter, yeah. okay. 
and uh, she was born uh, up at the Hershey Hospital. And uh, then I, after I was married eight years, and I was divorced. So, but she, she we stayed in Palmyra. Okay. And she she grew up there. So she went to, she went to some of the same schools school. that, that you did. Yeah. Right. I guess it was to that. Probably to the middle school. The new school was the new high school was. No, we were just talking earlier today. I think it was in the seventies. Yeah. They built the new high school, so she went to the, yeah. the same schools that you did. Yes. Do you think that the education changed from the time you were there until oh, your daughter? Oh, sure there? it has. I know it has changed a lot. Well, we just had basic. Uh, it was history, uh, chemistry. Biology, uh, English, other language, uh, German or French. Uh -huh. I think were available, but uh, now I'm sure they have, uh, well, you know, far That's different courses. They have all these electives. They're talking yeah, about the electives. Yeah. Now, did you have home home economics? Yes, in school? I did. In high school, and did you? I had. Oh, I had it. Wonderful teacher. Who was that? Miss Rischel. Oh, I've heard the name. Okay. Uh, yeah. She was Mrs. Swank's sister. Oh, okay. She was her sister. And later in life, when my mother was at, uh, what was that nursing home up on the hill outside Hershey? The Alpine. The Alpine. Uh, I, she was there as, as a resident, and I became reacquainted with her. Oh, that's nice. And I went to Calvin's living in, in Alexandria then, and uh, I would write to her every two weeks. Wrote, How nice. I wrote, 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 wrote. Thing to do. do yeah. What other teachers do you remember? Oh, I remember Mr. Kelschner was our English teacher. Uh, he was scheduled to go at that time. The classes at the end of the year took a trip to Washington, and he was scheduled to go into our chaperone, but he also worked up to Hershey Park in the summer, and he, he had a heart attack and died while we were in Washington. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So he didn't get a chance to go with you, and then you came back and found out he had died. Well, he died, and I think his wife taught. She did. I was going to say this. She, she taught, taught when I was in school. The day after, after that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Swank was uh, Swank was our history teacher. Mr. Deck was biology and chemistry. Uh, let's see who else. I uh, Miss Kleinfelder was Latin. Uh, who taught French? Uh, uh, she was a basketball coach too. Uh, so they had basket. They had girls basketball. They had you girls were basketball, but at the, at the people had. Uh, I remember when we we had it. We did have gym. Uh -huh. Well, when we we did have gym in the old building, but then by senior year we had gym. And uh, when when we had basketball in the old building, the rules were. The guards were at the one end and the forwards and the center at the other end and you didn't cross the center line. And I tried to ask somebody if they remembered that and I couldn't get anybody who remembered it. Oh no, I remember that too. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. But you know, they didn't have girls' sports when I was when I was growing up. When I went through Pelmar High School, they didn't have girls' sports. Did they? Mm -hmm. No. They had intramurals. But they didn't have. Um, they had moved out. I'm sure it was a girls' basketball team when I was in high school. Oh, I think they did. I think you're right. I think and they had uh, the old gym, and they had a girls' game, and then a boys' game. And like, did you play Hershey or Palmyra? Or, yeah. Or, or I mean, uh, Hershey or Anvil or the other. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what. What other schools would play, but yeah, interscholastic—that's the word. Right? They didn't have interscholastic sports for girls. 
when well, I was growing but up. But we, we didn't have football. Oh, we had we had basketball, baseball, okay. and just boys baseball. There was no girls softball or anything like that. Now there's all kinds of sports. Yeah. The and people say boys. You're right, and people's energies are divided in all different directions. Yeah, that's right. right. When I talked with you before, you were telling me about growing up on Railroad Street. You were talking about some of the businesses that were around your home. Yes. Well, down at the railroad where the Palmer Nursing Home, mm -hmm. there was an Angles. Angles. Angles of general store. They had groceries and they had dry goods. They'd have fabric and they also, you know, sold clothing. Uh, I don't know if they sold, you know, like dresses, and, but I believe they had men's trousers and things like that. No meat. They didn't have meat because refrigeration That's right. wasn't any good. There was a meat market where the bicycle shop is now on Railroad Street. Bones. Did you know Thalba uh, Bar? Yes, yes. Her father. Oh, okay. Jane Ball had a meat market there. Well, he had groceries too. Oh. Uh, and the, the things were packaged. It was bulk. And crackers, they had to weigh uh, soup beans, okay. dried lima beans. They weighed them from a barrel. Well, when you were growing up in Palmyra, you went to those small stores. Oh, yes. You didn't have supermarkets. No, no. And there was an American store. Well, I guess Frank owns that building now. Frank, Frank Hedrick. Uh -huh. And right on the corner. Uh, it's an apartment now. But uh, at the alley. Okay, I know what you mean. Yeah, right there. At the and alley. that was a what kind of store? American store. And what does that mean? What did they sell? Oh, that's a grocery store. Oh, okay. It, it's Acme now, but it was a very... Oh, it started store. American and now it's Acme. Acme. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that was just groceries. And okay. <laughs> one of the men who had worked there, uh, uh, Mr. Hollinger was the manager, and one of the men who worked for him told me not to, uh, a couple years ago, that they had beans soup beans in, you know, in a, in a barrel uh -huh. to weigh out bulk, and they also kept a cat to, to, to keep the, uh, the mice down, and the cat did it. Uh, would get in the barrel? Got, uh, got, uh, did, did his business on top of the beans. Oh, no. And the manager said, just scoop the top off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't going to waste any of those beans. <laughs> No. Oh no. So, and there was an A and P on the other side of the street at the next alley. I remember the A and P. Yes. And uh, I was telling Pat, and, and uh, Al Geiser had a, 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 a barber shop mm -hmm. on the would have been on the east side of the street. Okay. Uh, I think about the second house from the alley. Okay. And next to that uh, was a tailor. Oh. A tailor had a shop. And I can't remember his name. I can picture it, uh -huh. but I can't remember his name. Was it Mr. Bundle? Wasn't there a Bundle no. that was a tailor? No, he, uh, yes, but it wasn't. That was bef it was before his time. Okay. And there was a Valara who also had a Taylor's shop up on Main Street. I remember that. But uh, this was before that. I, I just can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the Legion was there right at the corner at, of the alley. Okay. On the east or the west? On the east side. On the east side. Okay. Uh, the AMP was on one side of the alley and the Legion was on the other side of the alley. Oh, okay. And uh, let's see, down. Well, then uh, there was a, a cross a, across the street from where I lived. There was a Mr. Geiger had a plumbing, oh, okay. plumbing and heating sh store shop. 
over there. I don't know if you remember a Ruth Geiger who worked for Bowman's Insurance. I remember the name. Yeah, the years ago. What was her father? Okay. And uh, then Doc Shank was at the corner in that brick, brick, brick house. But before he lived there, Jay Early Stauffer owned that home. The ice. The ice man. The ice he keeps man. coming up. His name keeps coming up. Yeah. When you talked earlier about the meat and the, the resident yeah. of refrigeration. Yeah. Some people were telling us about how they would follow the ice truck yeah. to get chips of ice. Yeah, we, we, uh, well, they, they, they delivered ice. We had an ice box. And uh, if you forgot to empty the tray underneath, you had a flood. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it didn't keep things as well as uh, <laughs> refrigerators today. I do that. Because I think that's how I got my dislike like for milk. I think it was always half turned. Oh. <laughs> Did they used to serve milk in school? In oh, in no. middle? Oh, see, when I was oh, going no. to school, they had these little cartons, and they were half no. turned too. No, we, uh, nothing, we, nothing like you that. You didn't have anything like that. And you went home. There was no cafeteria. We went, that's right. We went home for lunch, walked home, and walked back. And uh, the, the afternoon sessions. Mm -hmm. Oh, and t uh, t teachers. I was, uh, there was a Miss Clive Keller, and Ravenstein, Miss Ravenstein. French. She was the gym teacher, wasn't she? Yes. Yeah, she okay. Was, I remember. She was gym teacher. Yes. And, uh, and, and later, uh, my sister married uh, a a friend of, uh, of, uh, of, of her sister's, Miss Ravenside's sister, was married to, oh, Red Fred's. Uh, there was a, a Russell, I guess it was Russell Fred's, uh, Gladys Hoover's, Gladys Hoover's sister-in-law, Catherine Fred's. She uh, passed away not too long ago oh. over at Twin Oaks. But uh, her, no wait, uh, and, oh, th this red friend uh, would, be, would have been Catherine's husband's brother, oh. married Nell Ravenstein's sister. Oh, okay. And, uh, and Nell, I guess then after she left there, she married and had a son. Oh. And I guess she didn't have too happy a life, hmm. from all I heard. Hmm. And, uh, her, and she passed away, and her son died very young. Oh. No, I didn't, I didn't know him, but, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, she was, she was a gym teacher and French teacher. And German, oh, Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy taught, and he taught when you did. I mean, when you were in school, oh, yeah. he taught, oh my gosh, yeah. he was still there when I I, I think he taught everything under the sun. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. I believe I had him for some kind of history with, yeah, and, yeah. Well, when you think back over your life, the times that you were in Helmar, what are some of the significant events that happened? Or like, I love the story about the the political parades and yeah. so forth. Were there other things like that that stand out in your mind about yeah. things that happened in Palmyra? Uh, well, I remember the the uh, well every Memorial Day, every Memorial Day, they all, there was always a parade and then uh, a ceremony. I don't know if the, the memorial was on Cherry Street at that time. I sort of think it was up at the Palmer Cemetery okay. that they would have a, a ceremony, a, a service. Mm -hmm. And they would shoot the guns off that afterwards. Yes, go. yes. So that, and, and the, the, like the 1935 celebration, do you remember? What do you remember about that? Oh, I remember uh, they had programs back in uh, on the school grounds. I think they had one of these, you know, when a, a, a group comes in and, 
and and they and they have the story. They give the story and the people, local people. And they and did that, that in 1935. Yes, I think, and the next in 60. I know in 1960 yeah. they did it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they did in 1935. And I remember Christine Hain was the queen. In 1935. In 1935. Now she lived with, uh, I think it was an aunt, Mary Longenecker. I remember that name. Yeah, she had worked up at the, the Valley Trust Bank. Okay. Uh, when it was still the Valley Trust Bank. Yeah, that's changed and, through the years, hasn't it? And, yeah. The names and, of the banks. Uh, and years ago, that building housed the bank, and the next was uh, Ober's, Ober's Hardware, Hardware Store, okay. and then Ferry's, okay. that was a general store to also, and uh, the AAA, That's right. that was that. and McEwen's Drug Store, Drug store. and uh, uh, Schiffer's Restaurant was at the end. Okay. And, well, it, that was there. What do they call that? Um, the something building. I can't think what they call it. I don't remember what they call it. Now. Sure, so the G building. Sure, I think called it. Yes, I think Mr. Brinzer does. I don't know what they have called it. Now. That's a huge building. Yeah. It has all those yeah. different things in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It had all those things in it at that time. Now, of course, that drug store's enlarged mm -hmm. and the bank enlarged. Mm -hmm. um, there was Oh, Species Restaurant was uh, I, some kind of a, they sell whatnots or something right there at the corner of Railroad and Main Street, right across from the Valley Trust. Yeah, there was a Species Restaurant there. Well, now was that the same Species, was it the same family as the grocery store yes, that, oh really, yes, it was the same the family? Same family. Okay. Uh -huh. That it was all, and they had an ad of a heavy man and a tall, thin man, and the heavy man said, "I eat its species," and the other one said, "I don't." <laughs> That's funny. That was yeah. their advertisement. That right was their ad. But nobody went. Nobody went out to eat in those days. They didn't have the money for that. And there was uh, at, at Broad Street. On, on the west side of Railroad Street, at Broad, the second building going north okay. was a Wolf's restaurant. Oh, okay. Wolf's, and uh, and they had rooms above where men, uh, unmarried men, would rent those rooms, and I guess they ate in the restaurant. Like a boarding house. Yeah, type. and Mrs. Wolf was, she was the cook. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, then the next was Bones Meat Market, uh, and I guess there was a louder milk's uh, Garmin louder milk father, I think, okay. uh, had a meat market, and his brother Beaver. That little store, there's a little building. If you go on South Chestnut Street, there's a small building next to that. Uh, and years ago, that was a bottling works. That that building on South. Chester. Oh yes, I know where you mean. You're you're going from Main Street. You're going to south. South, yeah. Okay. That first building was a a bottling works. works. Yes. Years ago. Yes. And, and there was a little building just across the alley from that, and I think Beaver Island like, had a, had a little had a meat market in there. Okay. And later, that's where I went to kindergarten. Mrs. Well, Batterf had her kindergarten. She went to kindergarten in there. Yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Batterf had right. kindergarten right. in that in that building that had been the bottom. Bottling works, works right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the louder works was across the street from that, across Chestnut uh, Street. Uh, uh, no, <clears throat> across the alley. Across the alley. Okay, <coughs> I know where you mean. There's like the windows in front of it. Yeah, now. there's just a small building right. there. Okay. And there was a doctor when I years there was that was in Bowden's home, an in Bowden home, okay. and then a doctor I can't remember his name, but a doctor had offices in there. 
Okay. Oh, and down the street, or down uh, from us on Railroad Street, uh, north of Broad, it would have been the third, the third house, okay. going north on the east side. There was a Dr. Bayshore. I remember hearing that name. Yeah, okay. and he was quite a character. He he was in World War One. Okay. And um, was he a family doctor? Yes. Okay. All right. Fifty cents, and you got medicine. And he gave the kids what we call red medicine. We thought it cured everything. Uh, could have been just sugar water. I don't know, but we thought it cured everything. And he was great for cod liver oil. And the emulsion type. Mm. We took that as kids. Did you take that every day? <laughs> every day. I know, my, my mother said the same thing she had to take. A every girl. day. Oh. 50 cents an office visit. And, you, and, and he, he, was, he was a very uh, blood speaking person. I know, the, uh, uh, I don't know if you know Ruth Schaefer. She was Ruth Benzel. Uh, uh, anyway, her they they lived in the home where I grew up, but uh, she after Dr. Hartman came to town, he charged two dollars oh. uh, and uh, for an office visit, and she but he took your blood pressure and temperature and all that. So Mrs. Benzel said to Dr. Bayshore. Why don't you do all those? He said, now this is using Dutch. He said, I don't have to. You come dop them down here anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was very bright. Yes, sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like quite yeah. a character. But he, yes, he was yeah. quite a character. And he and his wife didn't speak to each other, but oh. they lived in the same house. <laughs> they lived in the same house, but they didn't speak. Yeah. After I don't know how many years, but uh, uh, they wrote notes to each other. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. What other characters were there in Palmyra that you remember? Uh, well, there were uh, uh, there were a, a couple uh, drunks. Oh, uh, and everybody knew that. Uh, you better not mention names. No, but. I won't mention it. But there were a few of those. Around, you know, that people <laughs> knew about. Uh, uh, then, uh, let's see what else. There were a lot of businesses there on uh, Railroad Street. That was, I guess, because it was the only street that crossed the railroad. When I was growing up, that was really the, the main, main main street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, when you were growing up, I don't know how old the Gravel Hill Church is up there. I mean, was that there when you oh, were growing yes. up? Oh, yes, okay. that was there too then. Uh, I can't remember the name of the minister. I can picture him, but he was there and then. I think Patrick came after him. Uh, uh, he was there for quite a few years. Right. Yeah, so. Uh, that, and then I guess it was Buck Walker, and uh, now it's Smith. Did you go to that church? Yes. Oh, okay. So the, I was going to say, I wouldn't know the ministers of these yeah, churches. So, yeah. okay. Uh, I did go to, I, I, grew, I, I, I went to the Bethany church uh, first. Uh, I mean, that's where I grew up. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember when I left. Oh, I guess I think it was when my father was ill, and the minister <laughs> would go across the street to the Palm Press, but never come to see my father. And <laughs> Unfortunately, there are the, I know other stories yeah. similar to that, not about that person, yeah. but, um, you know, in Palmyra, we have a lot of churches. We've always, I think there were a lot of churches. So when you were growing up, there were a lot of yeah. options and churches? And yes. Uh, well, the first United Methodist, well, first it was first United Brethren, mm -hmm. and uh, then the Gravel Hill Church, and uh, uh, there was the Bethany Evangelical, 
and the congregational, the evangelical congregationals were up next to where uh, castles had their garage in that. Oh, in that little church, is that where they yeah, were? And then they moved right. down to Chestnut? And, right. Okay. When, when the Methodists built their new building, oh, no. they okay. bought the, that, that, that building. On College, on College and Main yeah, Street, College right? College and Main. Okay. All right. So those were the ECCs. And then the United Church of Christ was down that, at the corner. That was, uh, yeah, that was at the corner of Chestnut and and uh, and the brethren, the brethren church, but wasn't anything that's large as it is now. Is down where where it is now, right. same location, and the United Christian, and there was a a little white church. I'm not sure if it was Green or Franklin Street, uh, and uh, I don't can't, I would believe it was United Zion, but hmm. I'm not sure. Hmm. But uh, so those, have, those same churches that I think are still there, and there's probably more. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are more now. Well, this has been very interesting. We're going to have to wrap it up soon. But okay. is there anything else about Palmyra that you want to make sure that we have on tape? <laughs> I think I don't. I can't. I can't think of anything offhand. You, you started telling us about the 1935 celebration. Were you at all the celebrations? You were there in 35, you were there in 60. Did you participate in, what was that, a couple, 85? 85, next year. I was at the, I know I was, I saw, I was at the 60s. But I don't think, I don't think I was living there in, no in 85, 85. I would have been in Virginia. Right, you said 86 is when you retired, so that's yes, right. so yeah. I was in Virginia. But you've seen Palmer celebrate. Did you come home Yeah, for the and, and of course, this last one, I, I would have loved to go to some of the things, but it's just not possible anymore. <laughs> but uh, I, I, what I saw, it looked very interesting. Oh, we had, we were, those of us who have been involved have been getting tired now because we've had all year. And it was planned, the people that planned it planned for something every single month. So it's yes. been a year of activity. Yeah, you really had a, a nice, I thought it looked, seemed like a very nice celebration, much more so than what, we, what was before. <laughs> well, thank you again for talking with us. We really appreciate this. And we hope that the, the um, information about Palmyra continues by this, vi this video, so that we can continue um, yeah. well, telling the story of Palmyra through well, what you're telling us. Well, <laughs> I, it was nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. It was very nice talking.